At the height of the first Tyrannic War, the Tyranids unleashed thousands of spores above the vital polar fortresses on the Ultramarine's homeworld of Macrag. Entrusting the fate of the world to the First Company, Marnius Kalgar pursued the remnants of High Fleet Behemoth towards the edge of the Macrag system. After defeating the High Fleet at great cost, Kalgar's surviving ships turned about and roared back to Macrag. But would he be in time to save the beleaguered defenders of the Polar Garrisons? Hi, I'm Ed, welcome to Minisodes, and in this video, my Tyranids are going up against Matthew's Ultramarines. We're going to be playing 1500 points of 2nd edition 40k. This is a narrative battle, and our intent is to recreate one of the coolest pieces of background from when we were younger and just starting out on our hobby journey. Let's take a look at our forces. My army commander is a hive tyrant armed with a barbed strangler, bone sword, and lash whip. A hive tyrant can take three biomorphs, and I've chosen acid blood, a hardened carapace, and optic membranes. The Carnifex, or Screamer Killer, is a living engine of destruction. I've given it the biomorph's optic membranes and the voltage field for an additional saving throw of 4. Plus. Now for the Griblies. A brood of seven gene stealers. 20 termagants armed with flesh borers. Five Tyranid warriors armed with bone swords. They all have a hardened carapace, boosting their default 5 plus save to a 3 plus. And lastly, four Tyranid warriors, three with death spitters, and one with a venom cannon. They have the biomorph Adrenaline Sax, allowing them to run and shoot with no penalties once per game. Let's take a look at Matthew's list. My Ultramarine's force is split into two halves. The largest component is from the first company. This is the force that is holding the Polar Fortress against the invaders. Their leader is Captain Saul Invictus with his Plasma Blaster. Though other than that, he has no additional war gear. He leads a bodyguard of five Terminators. His special rule allows these Terminators to each take a war gear card. So I chose to give the Assault Cannon armor piercing rounds for a save modifier of minus six. The Sergeant has a bionic arm, giving him plus one strength in melee. Next is a veteran squad consisting of a flamer and a missile launcher. The squad was split into two combat squads for this game, one led by a librarian Codicia, and another by Chaplain Cassius, who was pretty important since he mitigates the fear effect of the Tyranids, plus a reroll on leadership tests. A twin-linked heavy bolter tarantula rounds off this half of the army. The second half of the relief force is led by Marnius Kalgar, master of the Ultramarines. He is accompanied by a five-man combat squad of tactical marines, a dreadnought armed with a power fist and multi-melter, a tech marine, and finally, a hero we named Pablo Doublehard. He carries a vortex grenade, a sacred relic of Macrag, only to be used in desperate times. You may recognize Pablo from one of Ed's recent videos. He kindly gifted it to me to add to my army. This board represents the Lower Penatorium, the final fallback point for the first company defenders of the Northern Polar Fortress. As we were playing one of the most iconic last stands in 2nd edition 40k, we agreed to play Tyranid Attack. This mission allows the Tyranids to bring back destroyed broods, individuals or support units in the next turn, representing the terrifying onslaught of a Tyranid planetary invasion. It also extends the game from four turns to six. Now in our game, we would have three randomized entrances for the Tyranid reinforcements to enter from. Matthew and his Ultramarines would start with roughly 1,000 points on the table, but at the beginning of turn four, a relief force would arrive. Would they be in time to rescue the remnants of the first company? Or would High Fleet Behemoth deal as grievous a blow to the Ultramarines as they did in the future history books. Oh, and as a final aside, we agreed that our game would instead last five turns, and we would not be using the Tyranid Random Events table. As my strategy rating was far lower than that of the Ultramarines, I deployed my army first, positioning warrior broods on each flank, with the Carnifex and Hive Tyrant bringing up the center. Matthew deployed his thin blue line, making the most of the hastily constructed defenses, the Terminators and Captain Invictus deployed behind the barricades, whilst the veterans with the missile launcher, along with the Codicia, 
was set up on the left flank. Cassius and the combat squad armed with a flamer deployed in the center, ready to react to any holes in the line that might need shoring up once the Tyranids made contact. The Tarantula and Servitor took up a commanding view of the Penatorium, ready to spray heavy bolter fire into the onrushing swarm. With Matthew's Ultramarines now deployed, I infiltrated my gene stealers onto the midboard, out of sight behind a cargo container. With virtually all of his weapons out of range, Matthew wisely placed his three squads on Overwatch. The Tarantula battery had range on the Termagants and let rip into the tide of critters. Rolling two lots of sustained fire dice, Matthew scored six hits and blew six of the shrieking Xenos into pieces. With shooting over, we entered the psychic phase. The Codicia reached out with his mind and sensed the malignant presence of the gene stealers lurking behind the container. Matthew played Smite with ultimate force and burst two of the horrifying creatures apart in a shower of gore and etheric lightning. Sensing a presence in the warp, the Hive Tyrant attempted to duel with the Codicia, but Matthew brought this to an end by nullifying the power. With a synaptic pulse from the Hive Tyrant, the swarm rushed onwards. The Termagants ran forwards, whilst the Tyranid warriors brandishing ranged bioweapons followed closely behind in order to keep the smaller creatures within their synaptic reach. It was at this point that Matthew triggered Overwatch with Invictus and the Terminator squad. Captain Invictus poured five shots from his plasma blaster into the Tyranid warriors. Invictus killed two warriors in a torrent of superheated death. Fortunately for me, the assault cannon missed. The storm bolters caused two more wounds. I saved one and took a wound on a warrior. Saul Invictus's plasma blaster now needed to recharge before he could do that again. The Khan effects ran 12 inches up the center of the board, followed closely by the Hive Tyrant. Recovering from the smiting they received in the Ultramarine psychic phase, the Gene Stealers sprang from cover, looping headlong into the Ultramarine's left flank. Matthew triggered Overwatch once more, and both combat squads fired everything they had into the Gene Stealers, causing three wounds, none of which I managed to save on sixes. A fourth Gene Stealer was struck by a crack missile and scattered itself across the walls and ceiling of the Penatorium. Brandishing their bone swords, my second brood of warriors bounded onwards, the pounding of their chitinous hooves audible above the cacophony of bolter fire and shrieks of dying tyranids. In my shooting phase, the warriors that had been plasmed by the hated Invictus deployed their adrenaline sacks, allowing me to shoot with no penalty after running. The Venom Cannon struck the Terminator Sergeant, and after some fun messing around with the Thudgun Salvo template and a D12, I failed to wound the veteran warrior. In the psychic phase, my Hive Tyrant played Energy Drain, bringing the phase to an abrupt end. I wasn't keen on getting smited again. Matthew took some time to consult the Codex Astartes for some guidance on the most prudent course of action. He then redeployed his Terminators into the center and ran Cassius and his squad behind the barricades, doubtless to bring the Flamer forward in readiness for the fierce fighting to come. The assault cannon then roared into life, and despite jamming twice, two armor-piercing rounds punched into my Carnifex. With a minus six modifier against it, I needed to make my save on a nine, which I failed. Uh-oh. Matthew rolled a 10 for damage, and with that, my Screamer Killer was slain. Oh, that was brutal. But wait, my voltage field. I rolled a four. Oh, sorry, Matthew. The Carnifex was back in business. The rest of the Terminators fired into the Termagants, cutting down four of the critters. Determined to slay the apoplectic orb once and for all, Matthew fired his missile launcher into the Screamer Killer. That's a hit and a wound. Another minus six modifier with a crack missile, which I failed. Voltage field time. The hive mind is unstoppable. The combat squad on the left flank rapid fired everything it had into the remaining gene stealer. Matthew clearly was taking no chances. The tarantula's hydraulics whined as its targeting matrix latched onto the Tyranid warriors. 
Their armored carapaces absorbed a good deal of firepower, but one warrior was torn asunder by mass reactive shells. In the psychic phase, Matthew didn't have enough warp charge to do anything, and neither did I. Tyranid attack allows me to bring back units, so long as I don't roll a 1. Ten termagants surged on from my board edge and scuttled towards the fighting, and three warriors hoved into view in the entrance nearest the Ultramarine's defences, thundering towards their left flank, intent on putting as much pressure on Matthew as possible. The bone sword warriors with the armoured carapaces advanced, looming over the first company veterans manning the barricades. The Carnifex charged into combat with the two Terminators. And the Termagants moved up to get the Marines within range of their flesh borers. My two remaining warriors, their adrenaline sacks dry, stayed put, ready to fire the Death Spitter and Venom Cannon into the Terminators. In my shooting phase, the Termagants loosed a deluge of boring beetles into the Terminators, causing two wounds, but failing to penetrate their tactical dreadnought armor. Now it was the warrior's turn, again firing into the Terminators. The Death Spitter missed, but the Venom Cannon struck the Assault Cannon Terminator, killing him in a supersonic blast of electrical energy and corrosive poison. Cassius was also struck, but the Emperor protects. The Hive Tyrant fired his Barbed Strangler, a truly horrific weapon, hitting the Terminator Sergeant, but failing to wound. In the psychic phase, Matthew's Codicia attempted to smite the warrior brood, but fortunately I'd drawn the Nullify card, which took care of that. In the close combat phase, the Carnifex brought low two storied heroes of the Imperium. I then made a follow-up move, bringing the Carnifex within striking distance of Saul Invictus, captain of the First Company. Things were getting serious for the embattled Ultramarines. At the top of turn three, Invictus moved out of harm's way on the insistence of his brother sergeant and surviving Terminator. Hoping to catch the onrushing Termagants off guard, Cassius ordered his veterans forward, doubtless to get the Flamer into the fray. Who needs barricades when you have power armor? A torrent of Prometheum reduced three of the Termagants to embers, whilst another three of the little bleeders were pulped by bolter rounds. The Terminator sergeant Realizing his weapon would be useless against the Carnifex, stitched a line of fire into the Tyranid warrior brood, slaying one of them. With the recharged light on his plasma blaster blinking green once more, Captain Invictus fired the venerable weapon at the Carnifex, jamming it in the process and failing to wound the beast. The missile launcher fired a crack missile into the monstrosity's rear, hitting, wounding, but ultimately failing to penetrate his void-hard chitinous shell. The tarantula joined in the fusillade of fire. Matthew really knows how to roll sustained fire dice, putting seven shots into the Carnifex, but again failed to punch through the alien's armor. On the left flank, the veteran squad rapid-fired their bolters at point-blank range into the looming warriors, wounding one of the fell Xenos. In the psychic phase, Matthew cast Smite into my warriors, but again, the oppressive shadow of the warp prevented the power from manifesting. With the defenders above completely overrun, more horrors poured into the corridors of the subterranean fortress. A brood of seven gene stealers appeared at the Hive Tyrant's bidding and moved to eradicate the last of McCrag's defenders. The Termagants bared their fangs and charged into Cassius's veterans, hoping to drag them down. The Carnifex, emitting a hypersonic shriek of cosmic fury, again charged the steadfast warriors of Ultramar. Whilst my other warriors overran the barricades on the Ultramarine's left flank, looking to finish the hated prey with their bone swords. Eager to see the slaughter up close, the Hive Tyrant bounded onwards, its lash whip writhing in cruel anticipation, whilst the unending tide of termagants brought up the rear. With most of Matthew's force now engaged in hand-to-hand, -hand, surely victory was only a matter of time. In the close combat phase, the bone swords of my warriors cleaved through ceramite and transhuman flesh. Such was my excitement at this grievous toll on the Ultramarines, I forgot to do a follow-up move. 
the rampaging Carnifex brought its sides down on the remaining Terminators, tearing them to pieces in front of their captain. It then made a follow-up move into Saul Invictus himself. With skillet arms and a combat knife, the Flamer Marine cut down two of his assailants. Another Termagant died under the armoured boot of a brother veteran. Having cleared the drop zone of Tyranid forces and battled their way down into the fortress, Ultramarines led by Marnius Kalgar himself entered the Penatorium. But would they be in time to save their brethren from annihilation? Matthew moved his Flamer Marine closer to the wounded warrior, priming his weapon once more, whilst Cassius closed with the surviving Termagant, eager to batter it with his Crozius. The Codicia, seeing his brethren fall to the bone swords of the warriors, leapt back into cover. This would at least give him a small bonus in a future fight phase. The Dreadnought, bellowing oaths of vengeance, used the heavy flamer setting on the multi-melter, vaporizing three of the hated gene stealers. The rest of the marines cut another two of them down with disciplined fire. The Codicia snapped a bolt round into a wounded warrior, slaying it and sending the massive creature crashing over the barricade in a shower of ichor. The Tarantula, its barrels glowing red hot, thundered into the warriors at point blank range. Matthew could really roll those sustained fire dice and with D4 damage apiece, killed another two warriors in a torrent of shells. The surviving veteran coolly loaded a crack missile and launched it into the Hive Tyrant, wounding it and doing an impressive seven damage. With only five wounds on its profile, the Tyranid leader was well and truly dead. A smoking crater in its torso, the Hive Tyrant collapsed. Matthew's flamer incinerated another warrior, and bolt of fire from the rest of the squad wounded the warrior with the Venom Cannon. In the close combat phase, Cassius fumbled spectacularly against the remaining Termagant, having to rely on his brother Veteran to finish the job. In the psychic phase, neither of us were able to act with the cards we were dealt. In my fourth turn, a fresh brood of gene stealers along with another hive tyrant, whose multiplying swarms of termagants did swarm upon him, surged into the chamber. Above ground, the Tyranid forces were all but spent at awful cost to the Imperium. Urged on by alien spite, my swarm pressed on. The two surviving gene stealers leapt into the tactical marines, whilst the second wave of termagants moved into range of Cassius's veterans. My surviving warrior, dripping with ichor from its bolter-blasted body, lunged into the veteran sergeant. The warriors on the left flank closed with the Codicia. In my shooting phase, the termagants fired their flesh borers into the veterans, beetling one of them to death. In the combat phase, the gene stealers tore three tactical marines to pieces and put a wound on Pablo Doublehard. Captain Invictus, calling up a century of combat experience, landed a wound on the hated Carnifex. Matthew's veteran sergeant deftly parried the warrior's blows and landed five in return, but failed to wound the creature. Overwhelmed by no less than three warriors, the Codicia fell, a prayer to the Emperor on his lips. In the psychic phase, I finally had the warp charge to cast Catalyst, but no eligible Tyranids were in range. Drat. In Matthew's final turn, his veterans piled into the warrior, intent on bringing the horror down. Marnius Kalgar charged the gene stealer in combat with Brother Doublehard. The tech marine wandered off to have a look at something over here. Whilst the dreadnought lined itself up for another molten blast with its multi-melter. In the shooting phase, just one gene stealer was slain by the dreadnought's template weapon. The tech marine fired his bolter at the termagants but failed to inflict a wound. The last veteran on the left flank fired a frag missile at the brood of termagants, but missed spectacularly. In close combat, Marnius Kalgar punched a gene stealer so hard, the Norn Queen probably felt it. But poor Pablo Doublehard fell to a gene stealer, his vortex grenade untouched. Another tactical marine fell to the claws of the gene stealer, and my warriors finally dealt with the tarantula battery, tearing the weapon off its housing, then piling into the servitor. Finally, bellowing oaths of moment, the warrior was pulled apart by Cassius and the survivors of the first. 
In my final turn, I charged the Gene Stealers into the remaining Marines, bringing three of them into base contact with Marnius Kalgar. The Warriors now eyed up the Servitor, whilst my Termagant surged into the Marine with the Missile Launcher. In the last round of close combat, Kalgar slew another Gene Stealer, but was dealt a wound in return. The Carnifex put three wounds on Saul Invictus, but the Captain's armor held once, failed on the second, and Matthew rolled double sixes on the third, leaving him with two wounds. He could do this all day, no doubt. And that brought the game to a close. That was tremendous fun. I've always wanted to reenact this legendary battle on the tabletop, and this game certainly did not disappoint. The Tyranids are brutal in close combat. The Carnifex, though, was just something else. And that voltage field, well, let's just say I might not be taking that in future games. I think it's just a little bit too good. Now over to Matthew with some of his thoughts on this epic encounter. This was an entertaining game, and I feel we did a good job of creating the narrative of the last desperate defence at the Polar Fortress. The Ultramarine's objective was to survive, and though they incurred heavy losses, I feel like they did that well. In the first two turns, I only lost three Terminators, which goes to show how tough Space Marines can be. Of course, the endless refresh of Ed's forces meant I wasn't going to last forever, but at least I managed five turns. Notable mentions are the Tarantula, which did a fine job of thinning the rampaging horde. I might take more in future games. The second legend here was the missile launcher guy who almost killed two monsters. Were it not for the voltage field, the missile launcher would have downed the Carnifex. But I guess he would have to settle for the Hive Tyrant who ate his crack missile later on. Third is Sol Invictus, who tied up a Carnifex for half the game. He only caused one wound, but he really held his own in close combat. And finally, the Codicia, who pretty much eliminated a squad of Gene Stealers with his psychic power Smite on the first turn. As for things I would change, not much really. The Vortex Grenade never left the belt of Pablo Doublehard, which was a disappointment. The Bionic Arm was redundant war gear, but apart from that, the Honoured First died with honour. Before I go, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Matthew for rolling dice with me. Be sure to check out the links to Matthew's channel and hobby Instagram in the video description. Oh, and check out the awesome portrait Matthew did of Buffy. She loves it. I think that just about wraps it up for this week. Thanks so much for watching, and happy hobbying. <laughs>